Our Earth and everything else in the solar system are the slaves of just one object. Everything revolves around it and its brilliance outshines everything. We are of course talking about the Sun, a gigantic furnace fueled by an unimaginably powerful nuclear reactor. Our star may seem calm and welcoming, but don't be fooled. Its violent outbursts can be so powerful that it can, possibly, completely screw up all ecosystems on Earth and provoke chaos even in the far reaches of the solar system. Today we'll learn a bit more about the Sun. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. By far, the Sun is the most powerful thing in our solar system. This star is 100 million times more energetic than every other object revolving around it all put together. It's a highly dynamic and complex thing, and yet the physics behind it is relatively simple. The Sun is nothing more than a giant ball of gas. When it formed, pockets of hydrogen gas started to attract each other due to their gravitational pull. As these pockets got bigger, their gravitational pull became stronger, thus attracting even more gases. Eventually, this gaseous object attracted so much matter that, at its core, pressure reached a critical point. You see, normally, atomic nuclei very strongly repel each other because of two opposing forces. The Coulomb force causes protons to repel each other, while the nuclear force keeps protons and neutrons together. So at the Sun's core, hydrogen atoms are pressed together at such extreme pressures that these forces are overcome, the hydrogen nuclei merge and form a new element, helium. The excess energy that results from this fusion is released as heat and light. About 600 million tons of hydrogen are turned into helium every single second. In the same amount of time, 4 million tons of matter are converted into energy. This energy, which can take between 10,000 and 170,000 years to escape from its core, is the source of the Sun's light and heat. Although Earth receives only a billionth of the Sun's total energy, that is enough to keep us all alive. The figures behind this powerhouse are literally incomprehensible to humans, but I'll state them anyway. Earth is 149.6 million kilometers away from the Sun, which means that light, which travels at nearly 300,000 kilometers per second, takes 8 minutes and 18 seconds to reach us. The Sun is 1.39 million kilometers in diameter, 109 times that of Earth. It weighs 2 billion billion tons, 330,000 times more than our planet. Roughly three quarters of the Sun's mass consists of hydrogen, 25% is helium, the rest are trace amounts of heavier elements like oxygen, carbon or iron, which also form through nuclear fusion. 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system lies within the Sun. Most of the rest is, by the way, in Jupiter. The Sun is a G-type main-sequence star, a relatively small yellow dwarf. Its surface temperature is around 5500 degrees Celsius, and at its core, the temperature rises to a mind-boggling 15 million degrees. The Sun has been around for 4.8 billion years, and it will continue to exist for another 5 billion years. It's no wonder that most cultures on Earth viewed the Sun as a deity. Its powers are truly godly. All of this energy isn't just released in a calm and orderly fashion. Sometimes, the surface of the Sun is split open and its innards explode outward, ejecting huge quantities of charged particles. These are the coronal mass ejections. These explosions can release up to 10 billion tons of matter at a speed of 60,000 km per hour. They are the biggest explosions in our solar system. How big of an explosions are we talking about? Well, it's about the equivalent of 1 billion nuclear bombs going off at the same time. If such an event is powerful enough, it can be bad news for us. 
if the ejection is directed towards us. The shock wave can cause a geomagnetic storm that can disrupt Earth's magnetosphere. You know, the thing that keeps deadly cosmic rays away from us. Radio transmissions can also be disrupted which can hinder communication on a global scale. Satellites, electronic devices and electrical transmission lines can also be damaged, which could lead to massive and long-lasting power outages. At the very least, the charged particles create strong aurorays near the poles. In short, we are literally at the mercy of our sun. Before we continue, I'd like to ask you one thing. This channel has no sponsors, so if you enjoy the content I make, please consider supporting these videos by becoming a patron. You can check out my Patreon page by clicking here, or find the link in the description. And with that out of the way, we can move on to the next fact. Sometimes, the sun gets some black spots on its face. These are called sunspots and there's still a lot we have to learn about them. Sunspots are cooler areas that appear to be darker than their surroundings due to the lower temperatures. Although cooler doesn't mean cold, they burn at around 2000 degrees Celsius. Sunspots are caused by concentrations of magnetic field flux that inhibits convection or heat transfer. They can be as small as 16 kilometers in diameter or 160,000 kilometers. Their frequency of appearance varies and seems to follow an 11-year solar cycle, during which solar activity reaches a minimum and a maximum. How these spots affect weather on Earth, though, we don't fully understand yet. For instance, between 1615 and 1715, sunspots were practically inexistent. Coincidentally or not, that's roughly the period of the Little Ice Age, when global temperatures dropped a bit. If the two turn out to be linked, the opposite effect might also be true. An increase of solar activity could result in an increase in temperatures here. No, that doesn't mean global warming isn't real. Get over it already. The sun can be scary, but let there be no doubt, without it, we wouldn't exist. But there is a strange part in this story that is yet to be explained. It's called the faint young sun paradox. Theoretical models of the Sun's development suggest that 3.8 to 2.5 billion years ago, the Sun was only about 75% as bright as it is today. This is too weak of an energy output to sustain liquid water on Earth's surface, so life shouldn't have appeared, much less thrived. However, life did exist on Earth at the time, and geological records prove that the planet remained at a fairly constant temperature. It was believed that our atmosphere might have contained much larger quantities of greenhouse gases, thus trapping heat more efficiently. But again, sediments from that period don't show an increase in such gases. For now, this paradox remains a mystery, but it seems that for a long time in our early history, we weren't actually in the sun's Goldilocks zone, where it's not too hot, not too cold. Here on Earth, the Sun is an ever-constant presence, and our entire biology completely depends on it. But we're used to a very precise day and night cycle. That's not a valid case everywhere on Earth. In the polar regions, summer is one long day, and winter is a very long night. This is because the Earth tilts on its axis, at an angle of 23.5 degrees. As you go further north or south, days become longer in the summer and shorter in the winter. When you get close enough to the poles, the day-night cycle disappears altogether. For humans and other animals that haven't adapted to these conditions, their circadian rhythms are completely bewildered. Just imagine having constant daylight for six months and complete darkness for another six months. One of the great coincidences of our solar system comes in the form of total solar eclipses. They occur when a portion of the Earth is engulfed in a shadow, cast by the Moon, which fully blocks sunlight. I say it's a coincidence because conditions have to be just right for this kind of eclipse to occur. If the Moon or the Sun would be just a bit bigger or smaller, farther or closer, or on a different orbital plane, a total solar eclipse wouldn't be possible. 
but the elliptical orbit of the Moon takes it far enough away from Earth that its apparent size is not large enough to block the Sun entirely. The coincidences are threefold actually. 1. The Sun's distance from Earth is about 400 times the Moon's distance. 2. The Sun's diameter is about 400 times the Moon's diameter. These ratios make the Sun and the Moon appear to be the same size. And 3. This alignment occurs at a time when intelligent life exists on Earth. Because the Moon is slowly moving away from us, in the past and in the future, these ratios will no longer be valid. So, be glad to be alive, at this precise moment in time, on this precise planet, at just the right distance from our magnificent Sun. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.